Dylan White just weighed in at 247 pounds. Povetkin weighed in at 228 pounds. This is the lightest Dylan White has been since 2018 when he fought Derek Chisora for the second time. As far as Povetkin, he's still within his normal weight range. He's four pounds heavier than he was for the first Dylan White fight, but actually lighter than he was for his pre- previous fight against Michael Hunter. Lighter than he was against David Price. Heavier than he was against Christian Hammer. The same as he was against Andre Rodenko. So as I say, this is within Povetkin's normal weight range. As for Dylan White, the question is, has he come in several pounds lighter? We're talking about five pounds, a little bit more than that, lighter than he was for the first fight, simply because he's trained harder? Is that the only reason? Or is it also because he plans on being more mobile for this fight. Now, if we look at the last time he weighed around this weight, it was Derek Chisora in 2018, and he was mobile in that fight. Dylan White did not fight aggressively in the Derek Chisora rematch. He was far less aggressive than he was in the first Chisora fight. And in fact, he allowed Chisora to outwork him for long stretches of that contest to such an extent that many of us had Derek Chisora up and I think even the official judges had Chisora up going into that 11th round so if we're to read into this weight we might come to the conclusion that Dylan White does indeed plan to move but then again maybe it's nothing to do with strategy maybe it's just that he was more motivated this time around been training out in Portugal where the weather's getting warm. He's got the bit between his teeth. He wanted to leave no stone unturned. Maybe he's been even more hardcore with his diet and so on. Is that all it is? Or is it a strategy thing? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And let me know what you think the best approach for Dylan White would be. Is it going to be best for him to be more mobile this time around? Or is it actually going to be best for him to stand his ground more, maybe try and push Povetkin back and land his big shot before Povetkin lands on, it, on Dylan White's chin again? Let me know what you think. Now, personally, I was quite impressed by the way Dylan White looked on the pads because to me, there was quite a difference in terms of his fluidity and speed hand speed and the way he was moving around in the workout for this fight compared to most Dylan White workouts. He looked a lot more mobile to me. And the shots he was throwing, the rhythm that he was using was suggestive of a mobile kind of fight. But then again, it could be trickery. Maybe he wants Povetkin to think he's going to be mobile. As I mentioned in a previous video though, one of the best ways to fight an older fighter like Povetkin is to make it a young man's fight. To use a lot of movement, if you can, if you're capable of doing that, to force the older fighter to chase you around the ring, to make him frustrated, to make him work harder than he wants to work. Older fighters don't like working at a high pace. They don't like having to track you down and all that kind of stuff. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be indeed to push him back to keep him off balance so he can't get power on his shots and to just outwork him, to overwhelm him with youth and energy. So there's two different ways of doing it. Either way is risky. I think if he's going to fight an aggressive fight, the risk is going to be more early. Whereas if he's going to box more, the risk may come in the middle or late rounds rather than early. Because if his movement is good and he's snappy and landing jabs and all this kind of stuff, it might take Povetkin a while to catch up with him and be able to land something significant. And also, you have to take into account how powerful Dylan White can be if he's moving a lot. Some fighters can generate tremendous punching power 
even when they're moving around the ring. David Hay was able to generate tremendous power on the back foot. We saw that in that fight against John Ruiz in the first round, he walked Ruiz on to a tremendous right hand and dropped him. Now, Dylan White was moving around in that Derek Chisora rematch and he knocked him out with a big left hook, but I wouldn't necessarily say he was on the back foot as such. I mean, he wasn't really moving that much at the point when he landed the shot. He did plant his feet and they both threw left hooks at the same time, but Dylan White's landed better and knocked Chisora out. But if we're talking about him consistently moving around, and remember, he hurt Derek Chisora early in that fight, I think in the first round. Then he didn't go for the finish. And between the first round and the 11th round, up until the knockout, he didn't really hurt him in between at all. You see, so how hard can Dylan White really hit when he's being very mobile? And the reason you have to take that into account is, will he be hitting hard enough to deter Povetkin from coming forward? Because if he's moving around, given the fact that Povetkin managed to knock him out with one punch first time, that might encourage, it might be like a red flag to a bull. It might encourage Povetkin because he's not feeling the same kind of power in the shots as when Dylan White's coming forward. It might encourage him to be more aggressive, knowing that he only needs to land the one. So it's a very, very interesting fight. And I can't wait to see what happens. May the best man win. But as I say, I find the weight of Dylan White quite interesting. Again, it could just be that he's trained harder and he's more motivated. But coupled with the way he looked at the workout the other day, the kind of shots he was throwing, the way he was constantly moving his feet, he wasn't planting his feet in that workout. Maybe there's nothing to be read into it. Maybe it's just a little move around the ring, you know, for no particular reason. He, he decided to move, just warming himself up or whatever the case may be. But maybe there is something there. We'll see on fight night. These are all the questions I'm interested to see answered. That's why this kind of fight is fascinating. This why, that's why this kind of fight has me interested. Because I don't know what both guys are going to do. Well, I know what Povetkin's going to do. He's going to come forward and try and knock Dylan White out. But I don't know how Dylan White is going to strategize. Yeah, I don't know. We can only speculate. And I'm fascinated to find out what he will decide to do. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And by the way, I've uploaded a video to Rumble, to my Rumble channel, about Terence Crawford's recent remarks about Canelo Alvarez. I decided not to upload it to YouTube because, <laughs> well, we don't need to go there. But sensitive topics can... Uh, cause issues on YouTube. So I've decided to upload it to Rumble. It's free for all of you to watch. Just head on over to my Rumble channel, Hatman Unchained. You can watch it over there. I'll leave a link in the comments below. And in either in the comments or in the description, I'll pin the comment to the top or leave it in the description for you to go watch the Terrence Crawford, Canelo Alvarez video on Rumble. All right. So until next time, I'm out.